in the last few videos of this course, we've been looking at things like mutexes and channels and buffer channels in order to effectively communicate and to prevent or guard ourselves against race conditions within our concurrent applications. Now, in this video, we're going to be taking the knowledge we've learned in these videos one step further, and we're going to be looking at how we can implement worker pools within Go. Now, before we go any further, we should really try and understand the concept of worker pools and what advantages they provide us. Now, in other languages, the concept of a worker pool is there to effectively reduce the costs of spinning up new threads every time you have a new action or a new job that you want to process. In Go, the thread model is typically one thread to many Go routines, and the cost of spinning up these Go routines is relatively insignificant compared to the cost of spinning up a thread. So the same reasoning doesn't really apply here. However, th worker pools are effective when it comes to trying to limit the number of concurrent processes that we have going on at any one time. Now, this is great if you're thinking about IO bound applications or IO, IO bound operations where you want to limit the number of IO operations going on at any one time in order to prevent things like accidentally DDoSing a service or consuming too much network bandwidth. Cool. So let's have a look at the code and try and implement our own version of worker pools now that we have some idea as to what they provide us. Now in this video, we're going to be creating a crawler that's effectively going to crawl a list of URLs and return the status code for those URLs. So the first thing I want to do is define a new site struct and this will have a URL of type string. And I'm also gonna do a result struct like so. And this is gonna have the status, which will be int. Next, within the main function, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a channel and I'm gonna call this jobs. I'm gonna use the make keyword channel this is going to be of type site and i want this to be a buffered channel with a size or length of three and i also want to do the same for the results so let's do results make channel result and again let's keep the size to three so these two channels that we've defined here are effectively going to be the ways that we communicate to the workers within our worker pool now we need to instantiate these workers, so let's do that now by using a for loop. And let's say for worker, or w, is equal to one. And let's limit the number of workers to three. And let's do w plus plus. And then we want to do go crawl. We'll pass in the worker ID, and let's pass in the two channels. So let's do jobs and results, like so. Now this isn't defined yet, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Cool. So this is effectively where we instantiate the workers within our worker pool. We'll need to effectively create this crawl function so that it will continually listen for new jobs to be sent to the jobs channel and then it will then be able to process that job. So let's tackle that now. So let's do func crawl. We'll say the worker ID is type int and it'll take in the jobs channel like so and results which it will be sending to and it will send a result like that. Now this syntax is something that we should highlight. We'll be receiving a jobs channel which we will be receiving sites that we want to crawl from. So we need to put the less than minus sign in front of the channel here. And then the results channel is something that we're going to be sending the results to. So we then have the less than and minus sign after the channel keyword like so. Next within the body of our function, what we want to do is to instantiate a for loop and We'll say for site is equal to range of jobs. So for every site that gets passed to this jobs channel, let's try and process it. So the first thing I'm going to do is log.printf and I want to print out the worker ID just for debugging. And let's say worker ID percentage D 
passing in the worker ID. Saving that is going to import the log package at the top, so just be aware of that. And then I want to do response or error is equal to http.new or get, sorry. And we're going to pass in the site.url. Let's handle the error. So if error does not equal nil, log.println error.error. And then we want to send the result of this request back to the results channel. So let's do results. And we want to pass in our new result, struct. And we want to set the status is equal to response.status code. Perfect. So if you are new to go and you're following this course along, you may not be familiar with some of the code that we've got going on here. And let's just cover it quickly. So what we're effectively doing here is we're using the HTTP package or the net slash HTTP package in order to send a get HTTP request to the URL that we're going to be passing in. We're then going to be capturing either the response or the error on the left hand side of this declaration here. And then we say if the error is not now, then we want to effectively log out that error and see what the issue was. Now, regardless of the result, we want to then send back to the results channel the result with the status code equal to the HTTP request status code. So if it's a successful code and we get an OK message, we should get a 200 status back. Now we're going to be covering sending network requests or HTTP requests in more depth in a future video. So don't worry about that too much just now. Cool. So let's go back down into the main function and let's start to send jobs or URLs to our worker pool for it to be processed. So I'm going to define a slice of type string. And within this, I'm going to define all of the URLs that I want to parse or send requests to. So let's do tutorialedge.net. Let's do, let's say the pricing page, for example. Let's do example.com. And let's do google.com. Just to give us a nice spread. Now that we've got this list, what we effectively want to do is for every URL, so for each URL in the range of our string slice, we want to send this new site to our worker pool. So let's use the jobs channel. We're going to be sending something to this jobs channel and we're going to be using the site struct and we're going to set the URL within that to URL. And let's change this to URLs, that should work. And then after we've finished sending all of the URLs to this job channel, we want to close this channel. So in a more complex example, you might have a producer that's constantly sending new jobs to this worker pool. However, for now, we just want to keep it relatively simple and send just the four jobs that we have predefined here. And of course, now that we've sent these jobs, we also want to be able to see the results of these jobs. So we need to effectively listen to the results channel or receive from the results channel. And we can do that using a for loop like so. And we can say for a is equal to one, a is less than or equal to four, which is the length of URLs, a plus plus. Let's do result is equal to receive from the results channel. And let's do log.print and we'll do print line just the result like so. Cool, so now that we have a mechanism for capturing the results on line 51 here, let's try and run our application. So let's go into the terminal and do go run main.go and let's see what happens. Cool, so in this case, every time we send a job to the jobs channel, it's going to get picked up by one of the workers within this pool and then it's going to get executed. So we're going to see the worker ID is printed out. It's then going to send a HTTP request to try and hit that URL. 
and then it's going to return the status code to this results channel. Cool. And just to check the order, let's expand this further. And let's add a new field. So let's say the result and the URL. You could possibly do this on the site struct, but in this case, I'm just going to do it in the result. And I want to add URL. So let's do URL is equal to the site.url. And let's add the commas at the end of the line. Save that. Let's go into the terminal, go run main.go. And as you can see, regardless of the order in which we've sent it to the jobs channel, the workers within our worker pool have returned the results in the order in which they're completed. So my site was sent first, it then returned first. Example.com then returned second, even though it was sent third, and then my pricing page, and then finally Google returned last. Cool, so that's all we're gonna cover in this video. Just to quickly recap, we've looked at how we can instantiate a worker pool within Go using this format here and using two distinct channels to both send jobs to and receive results from. And then we've implemented our own example by sending URLs, which our worker pool then picks up and then processes.